kids, it's me, you know who. HelloFresh delivers fresh quality produce from the farm to your door in less than a week, so you can savor summer flavors all season long. Get 16 free meals plus three gifts with code AWFUL16 at HelloFresh.com slash AWFUL16. Actually, he just steps out the window because he has the weird, long, crazy, Lovecraftian exactly, legs. Exactly, yeah. He and they just <laughs> fold up inside his body. So he just leans one giant, terrifying leg out the window and then just stepped out. Exactly. His legs snap in like a gruesome, like horrible <laughs> crunching, but then he just pulls them in from his body and new wet legs grow out. <laughs> it's a slapping wet sound. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. Once again, I am whole. <laughs> Cthulhu. God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to God awful movies, where each week we watch another terrible movie, so you don't have to. I'm your host Keith Enright, and I'm joined by the Dickensian scamp Eli Bosnick. Eli, how's it going? Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> And we also have a legendary veteran masochist. He can sword fight like the artful Dodger, but uh, he looks more like Fagan. Cecil, okay. something Italian yeah. is here. <laughs> Cecil, thanks for joining us. I'm always happy to join you when someone fists a puppet. So I'm here for that. I'm here for that. There's a lot of that. So Cecil, what puppet thing are we going to be breaking down today? We watched... In Search of Dudley Dumpling, it is the story of a failing radio station's quest to kidnap a religious puppet because <laughs> listeners are tired of sweat sock poetry. I okay, think God, that is that's the exactly plot. accurate. That Actually, is what plot. it's about. <laughs> See, this is not exaggerating. Any. There's no like poetic license to that. No, mm, I didn't no. make any of that up. No. <sighs> All right. Well, Eli, elaborate a little bit. How bad was this puppet movie? Well, if you love the Muppet Show but you've only ever seen it through the crack under your door at the asylum where you've been kept for the last 40 years because you massacred your family in a structure to a Lovecraftian god, Jesus you Christ. will love this yeah. movie. Yeah. All right. And is there anything you'd like to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? I would definitely like to nominate it for best worst misogyny. There's one sure. woman with speaking lines in the plot. Shut the fuck they, up. You shouldn't even talk just, about it right They now. fucking choke her out. They hate her. Yep. They like beat her. They throw over their shoulder. She screams constantly. It is the, it's the meanest writing it's towards someone in the, it's awful. It's genuinely awful. They just have horrifyingly upsetting fights. Yeah. With this Muppet and other Muppets and they think it's comedy. Right. No. It's just like the whole time it's just like <laughs> shitting on this one female exactly. character. Yeah. And then it's like boop, moving on. Yep. Uh, it's just a couple in the last days before they sign the divorce papers <laughs> on the Muppet show. Shut up over there with your ovaries, huh? Shut it up, you. <laughs> Don't you talk to me like that. I'm going to mothers. And everyone's just like <laughs> one of these days, one of the yeah, it's it's rough. Oh, God. Today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to go with best worst racial tension. And yes. stay with me. This is oh, a yeah. Yeah. kid's puppet movie. But yes, in this human puppet universe, they multiple times explore the concept of the racial tension between like the human race and the puppet race. We'll get to it. It's really <laughs> weird. The world building of this movie, if taken seriously, yes, is bananas. a terrifying hellscape. It's terrifying. Right, because like, we should point out, this is a completely straight-faced kid movie. So they'll be like, oh no, we've got to find all the bananas. And then just casually, they'll be like, remember when we fought for our right to vote in the <laughs> Heian uprising? And then they just <laughs> never fucking address it. <laughs> I feel like there's a series of like blood-filled prequels that we yes. have missed yes. to In Search of... Absolutely. Absolutely. Dudley Dumpling. <laughs> and I, we'll get to it later, but I just want to, I really want to explore why the nurses are the, the nurses are the most racist ones in the movie. I want to explore yeah, this the later. The human it's nurses amazing. go They're over the, the top with, with yeah. medical worst. racism. It's yeah. really, a lot of bigotry. It's really <laughs> troubling if you dig in on it, which I should point out is going to be yeah, a job. It's going to happen. The Human Nurses Association is technically a hate yeah, group. Yeah. We'll get it to it. It is. <laughs> 
SLPCs got them listed as a hate group. <laughs> yeah. And I'm going to take the easy one. I'm going to go with best worst fat shaming. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So th this story is about one of the, a puppet who's unpopular and then he finds Jesus and people like him. And in the brief moments that they will discuss this puppet's unpopularity, I don't know who was working something out in the writer's room, but you have never heard more visceral hatred of the fat than you have heard directed at the puppet, <laughs> Dudley <laughs> Dumpling. This movie is my entire childhood. Oh, me. man. Yeah. Man. There's literally a school days-esque hazing scene in which it was not out of the stretch of our imaginations that Dudley Dumpling was going to be sexually assaulted <laughs> by, <laughs> by a group of humans. A hundred percent. There's a hundred percent a terrifying bathroom scene in this. Yeah, like deliverance level scary. It yes, was yes, yes, absolutely. Ridiculous. Exactly. Same stain on his shirt, too. This Weird. This is a horror movie. I, we did this in the <laughs> wrong season. In fairness, he does have a pretty puppet mouth. You got you to yeah. be fair. If you change the music, it is a horror movie. No question. Yeah, yeah. that's all you have to do. You don't, that's all you have to do. You don't change any dialogue. You don't change any of the scenes. You just change. You changed it from major key to minor key, and it's a horror movie. <laughs> yep, and you've, done, you've made one of the scariest movies in cinematic history. <laughs> it's so weird. All right. I'm going to need a second. We're going to take a quick break, and then we'll be back to tell you all about In Search of Dudley Dumpling. Hey, guys. Oh, hey, Wally. What's going on? Hey, just out of curiosity, did you guys finish writing that kid's movie for Mr. Button yet? Ah, uh, no, we did not. Why? So I was out at the beach house with the kids this weekend, and you'll never believe this, but this wooden box washed up on shore, right? Huh. So the kids are super curious. We crack it open, and this movie script was inside. A movie script? Yeah. Well, technically, it's like a seven-volume epic. But basically, it's about like after the rapture, half of humans are turned into these cloth humunculi. But they still have all their memories and souls. But because of the rapture, TV is destroyed, and, and, and so are all the other digital images. So all people have to communicate with each other all across the world is the radio. Weird. That's a yeah, it's a weird super script. weird. Yeah. So people everywhere all of a sudden become like maniacally obsessed with finding happiness out of the light of God's love because they know they're damned because everyone else got sucked into heaven. So they start putting these philosophers and actors and like leaders and stuff on the radio to try to like test them to see if they know how, how to be happy. But when they fail, they get like publicly executed right there on the radio. Did you say executed? Yeah, it's super gory in the script. Anyway, so they, they kill like hundreds of philosophers, what? but then everyone simultaneously has the same dream that like a child is going to have the answers. So the people at the radio station who've been doing this, they go around and they start kidnapping kids halfway through the third uh. movie and interviewing them for the secrets to happiness. Do they kill the kids if they don't know? Yeah, they do. Absolutely. So finally, they hear about this weird kid who's been doing like miracles and preaching in the middle of the country, even though he's just like a tiny little kid. So they kidnap him and he tells the world how to be happy. And at the end of the movie, you realize he's actually the Antichrist and the radio people have helped him rise to power by accident. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, I think we could use like pieces of that and make it our children's movie. What do you guys think? Ah, uh, sounds bad. Really bad. Yeah, man. That doesn't sound like a good movie at all. Like, yeah, that's not true. good. Agree. No, no. Okay, but what if I told you that the screamer won't leave our dreams until you guys say yes? Well, why didn't you say Yeah, so? you know what? I'm in. Have either of you guys ever seen his face? I don't think he has one. Cecil. Cecil, are you awake? What? Oh, damn it, Eli. How did you get in my apartment? I presented to be a lady and I married your super. I have a present for you. It's 5.30 in the morning. That's right. And you know what that means. I'm going to wrap you in a blanket and beat you to death right now. <laughs> no, it's toothbrushing time. And look, look what I brought you. You brought me toothpaste? <laughs> Three meat hoagie flavored toothpaste. You know, because you're Italian. Eli... I don't need racism-themed toothpaste to keep my oral health. I have Quip. Oh, what's Quip? Heath, you're here too? Yeah, yeah. I, I came in case you didn't want the toothpaste. Yeah, I man, it's all yours. You can just <laughs> nice. have it. Nice. All right. Mm. 
The Quip electric mm. toothbrush is loved by over mm. 7 million mouths and has timed sonic vibrations with 30-second pulses to guide a dentist-recommended two-minute clean, a lightweight and sleek design for adults and kids with no wires or bulky charger to weigh you down. Mm. Okay, but what about all the other stuff you need for your mouth, like floss and mouthwash, that stuff? Quip has everything you need to build a complete routine. Refillable gum that's sugar-free, has long-lasting mint flavor, and comes with a dispenser. And refillable mouthwash that's four times concentrate. Plus, it's good for you and good for the planet. Okay, I suppose you're going to tell me they come in mozzarella flavor, too. Nope, no. But if you go to getquip.com slash awful right now, you'll get your first refill free. That's your first refill free at getquip.com slash awful, spelled G-E-T-Q-U-I-P dot com slash awful. Quip, the good habits company. All right, Cecil, I get it. Come on, Heath, he doesn't need us. Your loss. Did you, did you eat a whole tube of toothpaste? Yes, I did, the whole tube. Are you going to throw up? Yeah, almost. Almost certainly, yes. It's getting close. And we're back. And we're going to start with a logo for Mr. Button Family Video. We've done one of theirs before. <laughs> Ambush, also with puppets. And uh, that logo, it's like rich Uncle Pennybags from Monopoly, but <laughs> with bad enough graphics that it's technically not, I believe, right. stealing it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if Mr. Meeksy's assignment was to be racist, he'd be Mr. Button. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Music here is also quite amazing. <laughs> yeah, quite amazing. <laughs> All they did is just hit one like like tango on the Casio or whatever to play and like that's what you get for the rest of the movie. Yeah, like the royal wedding is starting but a button on a Casio, which is weird. You didn't expect that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so from there we get to see uh, a classical radio DJ named Elvira. And she turns off the music and she decides, I'm going to recite my own poetry now. And the poem she goes with is an ode to sweat socks. And it, it, it's bad poetry. That really tracks with like every poet I've ever known, though. I mean, it really genuinely tracks with every single one of them. They're the worst. They're the worst people. <laughs> genuinely the worst people. And this, this movie is no exception. She's the worst throughout. Also, this is a puppet who's doing this. So I feel like it's kind of like an ode to like body skin suit. It's kind of creepy, right? <laughs> like if you think about you're what's right, actually right. happening there. Yeah, yeah. Puppets are just a glorified sock. And now, you're, yeah, exactly. Whoa. Absolutely. Wow. Yeah. Racist. Honestly, if I was forced to wear my own <laughs> skin. Be a nurse later in the movie. <laughs> yeah, inside my own shoes day to day, I would also write poems about it. <laughs> <laughs> You've cracked this wide open for me. <laughs> and the camera work. Let's just stop here. The camera work for the rest of the movie is going to be based on this camera work, which is when a puppet is talking, shove the camera as close as possible to their face so the audience gets motion sickness. That's their plan, and that's what they do throughout the entire it's movie. Rough. It's super hard to watch. My conclusion is that there were several moments throughout this movie, not every moment, but several moments throughout this movie in which a puppeteer was asked to puppeteer and hold the camera at the same time. <laughs> it is the only explanation for some one. of the camera work in this film. Yeah. Yeah. They do it selfies with a camera on their exactly, hands. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I feel like the camera was held up by one of those flimsy sticks with like a string on it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> like how Kermit's arms move? Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. Yeah. Absolutely. So whatever, the radio station is doing real bad. We see her producers be like, oh my God, this poetry is terrible. Our station's going to fail. And then they turn up the volume into her earphones way too loud as like a prank, I guess. Yeah. And she she flies backwards off her <laughs> chair from the power of the volume. And like, look, let's talk about the fact that like, this is a very easy cartoon bit, right? Oh no, we don't want to hear that. Turn up the music. And then you turn it to 12 and it's like, whoa, and they have weird hair or whatever, right? This has been done in a million cartoons, but because we're in a Lovecraftian horror, <laughs> instead, they just turn up the music. And she's like, oh, my ears. And she like throws up and her nose starts to bleed and she like convulses on the floor for a bit. And then just slowly pans up to the other puppets who are like circling their eyes with black makeup. We didn't see them putting on before. Fucking, no this will be throughout the movie. Throughout the movie. 
crazy. And then they do that thing where the puppet opens their mouth and kind of looks at the camera like, ah. <laughs> Classic. Like a crocodile backing up. They got that mouth open thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. So from that Lovecraftian horror moment that you really didn't expect in the first scene of the kids' puppet movie, we cut to the DJ having a meeting with HR about the volume prank yes. from her two producers. Yeah, exactly. So again, I want to point out, now we watch the puppets have a big, ugly, completely deadly serious fight for <laughs> 72 minutes? <laughs> if you are writing this for sane humans, this is two lines of dialogue. I can't believe you did that. I can't believe I didn't do it sooner. I kid you not, there are four minutes of her just being like, you motherfucker, you think I won't kill you? You think I won't kill you? This is a gun legal state. I'll come in and I'll blow the back of your heads out. And then, as though we've been experiencing a comedy beat, the boss comes in and he's like, that's enough of you too. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, it's so true. I just want to edit this boss into a bunch of terrible fight movie sequences, right? Like the murders from the raid and the assault from Unforgiven. And he's just like, that's enough you two. I don't know why I hired puppets. <laughs> yep. So yeah, the human owner comes in and he's like, all right, everybody relax. I'm a human. You're all puppets. The ratings are down. And look at this down graph. And they show us a graph that goes down, I guess. <laughs> and his new plan, they need a gimmick to turn things around. But he's got an idea. He got a letter, an anonymous letter from a listener mm -hmm. that says this kid named Dudley Dumpling somewhere in the local area has the secret to joy. And that would mean higher ratings if they can get D Dudley on the air, this child, to tell everybody the secret of joy. What do you mean right. by get him on the air, Keith? Oh, do you mean yeah. kidnap a child? Is that what you mean? <laughs> so you you would assume before I clarify that like, oh, we would, you know, ask this child to go on. No, the plan is literally what <laughs> Cecil just said. <laughs> yeah. We're going to kidnap a child and, and make him do a show about joy. And yeah, the, the crew is like, yeah, okay, we'll kidnap a child. And and I, I don't want to understate this. This is a great moment to point out the voice acting in this. If you want to have a funny kids puppet movie, you got to have some goofy voices, right? You got to have the, oh, hey, kids. And you're like, you, there's a lot of million, there's a million little voices out there that you could do that would be funnier than the guy they got who does most of their lines, who's essentially Marvin the Paranoid Android from the Hitchhiker Chronicles. who's just like... <laughs> Okay, I guess we'll have to <laughs> kidnap a child. Like, I mean, yeah. like, it's not funny. It's not interesting. And he's literally just down in the dumps the whole movie. He sounds like he's probably depressed and may kill himself later. <laughs> yeah, there's a wild, <laughs> wild country situation going on with how they hired their voice actors for this movie. He's, he's like Colin Robinson, the energy vampire on what we do in the shadows. <laughs> Just bore the shit out of you and he feeds off of it. The whole movie's like that. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, just to be clear, there is no pushback or alternate suggestions oh, to no. kidnapping a child. No. One of them, one of the puppets is like, won't he be unhappy if we kidnap him? And the, the head of the station's like, shut the fuck up. And so he does. <laughs> and that is it. Yeah. And then they say, the fight is, the fight is, the only pushback he gets is, okay, we'll do it, but you need to bail us out if we get caught. Yeah. He says, it's better than closing down the station. No, kidnapping a child <laughs> is definitely not better than closing your radio station. Yep. Well, they're doing it. So the two producer puppets and DJ Elvira head out in a van to do whatever the plan is. Find Dudley Dump. Like, just look around for this child named Dudley and kidnap him. Yeah. And they have some real problems with weight in this movie. They start already on the woman. Dropping like the only woman on the cast, right? The only woman puppet who only, she's the only woman in the whole thing that has more than like three lines. Mm -hmm. And she's a fatty, fat, fat immediately right out of the bat. First line. Right. And again, cartoons, I get it, right? It's like, oh, something weight joke. But instead they get in the car and she's like, oh, well, let's get on the road. And he's like, you're a fat bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and then literally... Boing, moving on. That's right. exactly they, what happens. They get in a fist fight while the sound effect is going on in the background. We we end, we do a doodly do while they're like, I'll fucking kill you. <laughs> oh, I wish you would. I wish you would. I pray for the void, you son of a bitch. 
It's <laughs> so and bam, fucking bam, weird. Bam. Did we check this? This movie's from the 80s, maybe the early 90s? This movie is from neither time nor space. Good point. I think it's, no, good point. I would argue this movie is from the early 80s, not only from the dress, but from several comments throughout. I would argue yeah. it's from the early 80s. Yeah, yeah. possibly early 80s although, or, ne or Nether Void, one or the other. Although, admittedly, it's filmed in Indiana, and they have been in the early 80s for a very, very long time. <laughs> Home of Mike Pence <laughs> and Mommy, or whatever the fuck he calls his mom. Yeah. All right. Well, from there, from that hilarious ridiculous fat shaming that they think was funny, but also it was terrifying. Oh, can we talk about, let's let's talk about the, the credits. Yeah, that's yes. what I was going to say. We get more credits. Oh, okay. Like so many more credits as they drive off to somewhere. Yeah, and then they like can scroll them on one of those things you used to look at when you were in math class in high school, those little transparencies. Yeah. But mm -hmm. the guy they hired can't keep it still. So he's shaking it the whole time <laughs> and you're trying to read it. Again, this entire movie is just an adventure in motion sickness. The whole yeah. movie. <laughs> okay, I, liter I literally do not know how they messed this up, right? Because this is something that you put on the film yeah, after, after it's shot. Yes, thank which you. means that the guy was standing there like fucking Michael J. Fox was in head oh, of their Jesus wow. credits. Right. Just, it's okay, guys. Keep filming. Yikes. It's going to be fine. <laughs> and, okay, so this, Eli's this, canceled. This <laughs> is so long that we watched this. so much worse. Everybody <laughs> in their crew and their cast and their, with their key grips, they're all so goddamn proud of their cursive marker writing and yeah. that they have to write their <laughs> signature out. And we want, it's like half the movie. Yeah. It's just this. Yeah. But, I want to talk about the hero of the film, the hero of the film, Craig Smith, who apparently learned to write the day they asked him to do his signature. It's okay. just a series of like loopity loop loop. And Craig's is like a big C and then a light X across it. And then the blood of his latest victim just smeared across <laughs> the slate. And then they move on like it's all the other credits. It's incredible. It's Madison Cawthorn's dad or something. They also paid a crop duster in this to take some film while they were up there. Yep. It's Indiana and that's the mm -hmm. only planes they have. And so they they paid him to do it and they're going to use that footage. They're going to use that footage so much throughout. They love their aerial <laughs> shots in this like quite a they bit. They sure do. Yeah. So they finally finished their cursive credits and they arrive at JC Penny because apparently that's where they're going to start Oh yeah, that's right. interviewing man on the street part of the plan to eventually kidnap a child. Yeah. I was confused about how that works here. <laughs> But that's what they do. <laughs> this is the planning stages for the kidnapping. Right, right, right. Fair. They interview people. They're like, have you heard of Dumpty Dumpling? No. Have you heard of Dumpty Dumpling? No. Okay. Why, why have someone who just says no at the beginning? Why not Great just go to, <laughs> go to one where there's an answer? Such a good question. Feel like you don't start running until you get a yes on that one. Yeah. But then it's time for another comedy beat, right? Time for another comedy beat. She's a bad poet. She's going to interview a guy who knows her and says her poems aren't very good. Anything except this. Hi, are you that lady from the, t the radio? Oh, yes, I am. I hate your poems. <laughs> Fucking cut. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, if she had called him a slur, it would be the only way to make this scene <laughs> more ugly. <laughs> Well, and also, what is she yelling cut to? Radio is an audio medium. So, like, yeah. like, what do you cut? I don't understand. You say that when you want to, like, have somebody stop filming. What are you ducking below? There's no frame, like what, Elvira. What are you doing? We're, we're yeah. doing radio. Yeah. <laughs> Push the button on your recorder. <laughs> <laughs> right. So that happens. Then they finally find one lady who knows Dudley. And she explains that everybody used to bully him in school, but he is a really nice kid. And she sends him to the park to go find some kids that might be friends with him, too. I love how weird it is that they just have this, like, random lady who happens to be working at this at, as a puppet at the supermarket who also understands the entirety of the neighborhood pecking order, too. <laughs> While she's, she also understands that. She's really into the drama of the neighborhood kids' pecking order. Let me tell you about the grapevine about the elementary school <laughs> bullying situation that I know about. How old? Yeah, Dudley just gets wrecked by kids constantly. <laughs> swirly every day for It's Dudley. really bad. Oh, no, I, yeah, swirly, but I meant like sexual. It's really bad. <laughs> well, you, you guys will get to it later in this kids movie that you're doing. I don't have a TV, so I mostly just keep up with the gossip on the bus route I drive. <laughs> <laughs> so, so they go to the park and they start asking kids about Dudley. 
This is my favorite part of the movie. This is so weird. So first of all, I need, part. I need parents at this goddamn park to be way better parents than they are. There's just random adults with recording equipment going up to kids and being like, I want to know some information about other children. And it's fine. <laughs> yep. Nobody says a word. It was the 80s. In the 80s, if you wanted to kidnap a child, you just walked up to a man on the street and said, let me borrow that. And you loaded him into your van and drove away. <laughs> MAGA. <laughs> well, whatever. The first kid they talk to is like, oh, no, right there is Dudley's best friend. You should talk to Dudley's best friend. Oh, but the kid, though, this is my favorite part of the movie. The kid is like, yeah, nobody likes that kid. They call him Pig City. <laughs> okay, Jesus. I wrote that down. Is that what they said? <laughs> yes, yes Pig, Pig City. City. Really? <laughs> yes. That's what he said. Fucking Pigsistan, <laughs> Pigsville, <laughs> City, Hamlet. Hamlet, Pig City. Oh, Got it. Hamlet found is it. perfect. That's exactly <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah. New pork. <laughs> so, so they find the best friend and they start talking to him. And the best friend's like, oh, let me tell you a story. And we get a flashback to Dudley getting bullied at school. Yeah. Sad, sad time for him. And it's, it's funny because like all the puppets look like they're in their late forties. Like they look like they have two teen boys and they're just really tired. <laughs> every right. single puppet, every little kid puppet in this. And they all look over their glasses like, like Dennis the Menace's dad. They're mm -hmm. all like really, really strangely old. They are. Yeah. And they're all laughing at Dudley. We get this weird close up, like it's going to be, we need to talk about Dudley by the end of the film. <laughs> <laughs> are you talking about his legs? Oh, well, no, that, okay. Let's talk about the legs. Then we go over to the baseball game. And as we covered in Ambushed, the difference between Mr. Muppet or whatever the fuck this company's name is and the Muppets is that they decided that their puppets, whenever there was a wide shot, would have absolutely disproportionate, giant, insane legs <laughs> hanging at impossible <laughs> angles. It's crazy. It's the worst thing that's ever <laughs> happened. <laughs> Lovecraftian. Yeah, it's literally Lovecraftian. Yeah, it is. Honestly, Absolutely. if tentacles that pulled the eyes from all who came too close <laughs> were sprouted from these puppets' bodies, it would be so much better than these 97 foot long legs that have like decay in the words of Shogoth <laughs> written on the pants. Okay, you remember Manos Hands of Fate, Cecil? Yes. Remember I the guy with it. the legs? Yeah, yes. Torgo. Tor yes, they have Torgo legs. He designed legs. all yeah, the legs. They have Torgo legs. Yeah. Or Torgo has them yeah. legs. They yeah. never skip leg day because it won't. Let, their legs won't <laughs> let them. They're sentient <laughs> beings. And again, so we're supposed to be watching Dudley get picked on here. He's at the baseball game and him and his friends say, hey, coach, when are we going to have a chance to play? And the coach, played by an adult man, turns to him and goes, you guys are a real waste. <laughs> Okay, that's a fucked up thing to say to a real human child. But if the coach was like, oh, it's because <clears throat> you're puppets. We're in a universe that's like half people, half puppets. The, the people are just objectively better at baseball. That That's what's happening right now. <laughs> that would make sense. But no, you're a fucking waste. <laughs> <laughs> so weird. That's literally what he says. This, this movie's traumatic. It's genuinely traumatic to watch. I feel like there was a puppet slur in the first draft of this movie, <laughs> right? There's, dude, there's a puppet slur in the final draft of this movie that we're okay. Because I, I feel like in the first draft, the coach was like fucking felties, and they were like, <laughs> oh. and they're like, get on out of here now. Okay, so from there we we come out of the flashback, and then we cut to Dudley and his grandpa talking at grandpa's house. And Dudley's like, Grandpa, how come I'm such a dud? Why am I the worst? And his grandpa does his best to explain. Yeah, and if you're wondering if Grandpa is ever going to say to his grandson, you are not the worst, no, he will not. No, <laughs> it's kind of sad. He's a religious character. Grandpa is like a good guy, religion thing in this movie. So he's like, ah, God thinks you're special. <laughs> 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 That's his he like pauses awkwardly while he's saying it too. It's like, rough. No, God is like, it's not that bad. Dudley. No, you're no, unconventionally you're, not the worst. It's it's yeah. <laughs> you're just fluffy, Dudley. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> his literal response I have down in my notes is he's like, Grandpa, am I a worthless sack of shit who deserves <laughs> to die and a waste as just told by my baseball coach? And his answer is. 
Have you considered becoming a Christian? <laughs> <laughs> they have to let you into heaven no matter how much you suck. That's their whole thing. I like too that his his plan is is to start believing in Jesus so Jesus will force other kids to like him because that those are the best yeah. friendships coerced friendships best friendships hundred <laughs> percent yeah and Grandpa shoots that down he's like Grandpa could Jesus make people like me and he's like no but he'll make you forgive the people who hate you and Dudley's like that, <laughs> that, that sounds sucks. a little worse <laughs> that sucks Grandpa I also I have a side note about this scene in the background they have decided to do a grandma puppet, yes. right? So that, yeah. so that we know grandpa puppet is married and heterosexual. I don't know why that was important to them, but they chose not to puppeteer her. So it appears to be grandma's dead body yeah, she's in a fucking Rose <laughs> yeah. for Emily situation. Absolutely. In the back. And it's, I got to say, when you're watching the scene, it's really creepy to watch a perfectly still corpse in the background <laughs> that neither of the characters is acknowledging. She's just planking on a recliner. Yeah, it's, it's weird. <laughs> Yeah. Weird. So from there they pray. Why do they awkwardly cover their faces every time they pray? Yeah. It's super weird. Is that a thing? I think it's I think it's a thing. I don't think that they're doing like a like a hold your hands in front of your body. I think that they're just like covering their weirdly covering their faces. Is it that yeah. people close their eyes when they pray like you know humans, talk but puppets to puppets don't have <laughs> eyelids so that they <laughs> hand cover it? That could Ooh. be a <laughs> No, Cecil, I think you're onto something that in this universe, puppets aren't allowed to speak to God because yeah. they're aberrations. Yeah. Right? <laughs> that would make, the that demons would make on sense Earth. with yeah. the entire tone of the entire yeah, movie. Yes, absolutely. It would. Yeah. Just a horse scorpion locust comes by and spears grandma <laughs> through the chest and carries her away. <laughs> and then stuffs her and puts her right back where she right. was. <laughs> yeah. That's canon now. Ants come crawling out of her mouth. <laughs> I don't know why this is such a horror themed episode. I'm having a lovely week. I'm so sorry, everybody. <laughs> no, watch fault, this man. one time. It's watch genuinely this, yeah. horrifying. You did something to this me. This is not your fault. Yeah. <laughs> so from there, we cut back to the park, the playground, where the radio team is still bothering kids and trying to ask about Dudley. Yeah. And, and they haven't heard about Jesus. So they're going to go to grandpa's because they think they can meet Jesus there. Okay. Yeah. So at first I thought they were, Saying that, like, oh, let's go talk to Jesus because of the way they made the dialogue happen. I was like, oh, in this universe, Jesus is maybe a puppet who lives locally. Okay. Yeah. He's a carpenter. That's what you just, that's who you were referring to when you use pronouns in that moment. But no, they meant Dudley's grandpa. So they go to Dudley's grandpa's house and they talk with him. And again, the woman has to just like be absolutely the worst. She's like talking about how. Oh, do you know this Jesus guy? And oh, is he a carpenter? Oh, did he build this building? And then she's like, at some point, she's like, like bringing herself to climax there. Like, I don't know if yes. you guys caught, she's like moaning and like rubbing the door and like ready to squirt on grandpa. Yes. The door? Yeah. Interesting. They rub this puppet up and down the <laughs> side of the door frame in the background. Oh, I thought Cecil was referring to that as like the front of the genitals. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I got confused. I was like, is that called the door? Uh, People say the that? Hood. Yeah. <laughs> the hood. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's, you got to check under the hood. Yeah. Got it. That's, that's where got that it. comes from. Keith is yeah. at the strip club. Show us your door. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, no, it does get weirdly sexual because grandpa comes to the door. They knock on the door. Grandpa shows up at the front door. Elvira kisses grandpa on the mouth, like yeah. super aggressively here. Yeah. But yeah, so they they discuss in the foreground, right? And again, I really need to send this image home. In the foreground, they're like, where's Dudley? And Grandpa's like, oh, he's not here right now. And Elvira is in the background, like gyrating against the set, being like, oh, this <laughs> And Jesus moaning. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. oh. And then they're like, okay, we got to go find him somewhere else. And she's like, yeah, I finished all over your fucking dresser. <laughs> Careful where you walk, Grandpa. <laughs> it's slick in here. I'm a squirter. <laughs> This is a children's movie. <laughs> That's the dirtiest thing ever happened right there. Mm -hmm. So much so that when she turns around and they're like, Dudley's not here, she passes out. Is that what happens? Is that is that what happens here? Yeah, she faints. That's yeah, she right. Yeah, you're right. She does. This Is this just more like anti-woman shit where they're just like ladies fainting, right? I guess. I think so. Okay. And actually, yeah, she faints 
And then one of the producers is like, oh my God, it's so much quiet in here without yappy woman. I hope she dies from <laughs> fainting. Yeah. So that's ridiculous. 100% what happens. Like, Heath isn't even exaggerating. No, that's what like, happens. God, I hope she never wakes up. I hope she suffocates and chokes on her own vomit and dies in her sleep. Yeah. Me, 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 me. That's her. I hope she dies. The only thing that would have made this movie more horrifying is if she had just started to choke on her own vomit like Breaking Bad <laughs> and the other puppets just watch in perfect <laughs> silence. They, don't, they bring grandma down who's <laughs> stuffed just to watch her. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so... <laughs> They get, they get finished with their shitting on the person who just fainted. And then they explain to grandpa, okay, we really need to find your grandson for our job. We heard he has the secret to joy and we, we want to get him on the radio. Right. And grandpa says, well, let me give you a little bit more of Dudley's backstory. So we get another doodly do. This time Dudley is in his room and his sister is being mean to him. Oh, shit. Yeah, this is terrifying. You know what the worst part about this whole scene is? I know exactly what you're about to say. To fucking in the mirror <laughs> is a Lovecraftian <laughs> Fozzie just a staring Fozzie blankly straight out ahead. You know, and it's like, and it's like <laughs> one of those movies where everybody in the room can't see what's happening, but you as the viewer can see it like the horror transpiring in the mirror, but everyone yes. is blind to it. That's the scene. Yes, yes. <laughs> and the implication of a Fozzie Bear poster in this universe means that this is a universe where the Muppets exist and these puppets that we see are like deformed half beings, <laughs> not risen quite to the level of Muppets. Like they're the first draft before the Jesus scientists Christ. finally created the Muppets. Oh, God. <laughs> they're the Frankensteinian <laughs> banished to a small island where they may hold no work nor look at the sun. <laughs> But yeah, so there he's staring directly into the mirror at the the Fozzie Bear poster behind him. His sister comes in and she's like, "Hey, don't turn the other cheek to those kids. You should kill them." Yeah. And then she, <laughs> she then she destroys his lamp and it never appears in the movie again. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, thought she, I didn't realize she was his sister because they don't mention that it's his sister. You have to find that out later when they mention like the name. So you don't really know. It's just some random person brushing their hair in his room. And so you're like, I don't know who this is. This is some random puppet. And then she's like, yeah, you should drink the blood of everyone around you. <laughs> and I'm a, also a marketer for a karate dojo nearby. Here's a flyer. And then she leaves after she breaks his room. Yeah, she Karate chops his bed in half and then walks out of the film. <laughs> You got to learn wrist control. It's mostly with a yeah. stick and a little string. <laughs> yeah, I know it's. I know on the flyer it's spelled Jodo, but it's pronounced Dojo. <laughs> so we come back out of that flashback. Elvira starts to wake up and she's like, I really need some water. And there's just complete silence. They all yeah. stare and do nothing. And she passes back out and they're like, okay, good. And that's the end of the scene. <laughs> yep. That was it. That yeah. was the comedy beat. Literally, the comedy yeah. beat was, can someone help me? Yeah. I'm in a great deal of pain. <laughs> Honestly, if a giant Native American puppet had come over and smothered her with a pillow, I would have felt a deep <laughs> and abiding sense of relief as to the direction the movie was going. All right. Well, on that note, I guess it's time for a quick break. And then we'll be back with act two of In Search of Dudley Dumpling. And now, a word from our sponsor, BetterHelp. Hey, Eli, what you doing there? Oh, hey, Heath. I was just taking my Epsilon brain pills. What are those? Oh, they're an advanced nootropic made of ancient mushrooms available only on media that's unregulated by the FCC. Okay, that seems unlikely. Look, Eli, if you want to take care of your brain, why don't you just try BetterHelp? What's BetterHelp? BetterHelp is online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat-only therapy sessions so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's affordable, financial aid is available, and you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Wait, therapy is good for your brain? I thought therapy was just for people who were like, you know, crazy. No, nope, no, nope. therapy is useful for just about anybody. Think of it like a checkup on your brain. Plus, our listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash awful. That's better H-E-L-P dot com slash awful. All right, he thanks. But hey, can I still take my Epsilon brain? Okay, you, you know that's not a real thing, right? <laughs> that's not true. Sometimes it's also poison. Okay. 
All right, fellas. So I was thinking maybe Dudley gets picked on at school. That's great. Lots of kids have to deal with that at school. Exactly, exactly. Hey, maybe he's fat. Uh, sure, Steve, he um, could be a little heavy. I, I know that no, a lot of kids... No, 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 like, fat. And everyone at school is like, what up, fatty? You big fucking fat piece of shit. Fat. I mean, it's a kid's movie, man. You can't have him calling him a big fat fucking piece of shit. No, we can't. All right, what about like Jelly Belly Wobble Lunch Muncher? Something like that, you know. Uh, I guess so. Uh, what they make fun of him for isn't really that and, important. And, and yeah. I could dress up as a kid and call him like a fat, fat, fatty and then throw paper towels at him while everyone's watching and they all laugh at him and chant like what a fatty, fat, fat, fatty is. Hey, fat, Steve. Fat, Steve. Fat. Yeah. Steve. Yeah, what's up? Were, were you um, were you um, a little, little heavy set as a kid? I had that question. I was, actually. Why do you ask? No reason at all. Yep, let's move on. Yeah, let's just move Fucking on. Fucking fat fuck. Okay. Yeah. And we're back. When we left off, Dudley was the worst, and there's no chance of this character having the secret happiness. Just absolutely no chance. <laughs> so there's really no reason to search for him. That's dumb. So now Elvira, Barney, and Charlie go search for him anyway. So they go to Dudley's church now to speak with his pastor. Yeah. His pastor's name is Reverend Horace Warmslather. And I double-checked, I real? listened to it multiple times. It's warm slather. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, 100% warm slather. That's sexual at best. <laughs> yeah. Well, don't worry about it. Hey, Cecil, they won't make it very obvious that he's sexually attracted to children throughout this movie, will they? Like several oh, long God. shots of oh, him no. watching, of him oh, touching no. children. Oh, or caressing children. Undressing children. Yeah, or, or watching children get wet. Yeah. <laughs> We're not exaggerating anything that we've said this entire time Jesus for the Christ. entire record. This is all happening. Yeah. So, Warm Slather, Pastor Warm Slather, gives us a flashback too about Dudley. He tells the story about the time Dudley was praying by himself in the pews of a church in the middle of the night. And he, see, the pastor sees that happening. And he comes up and he's like, hey, this is weird. And Dudley's like, no, Gramps told me it's totally normal and sane for me to do this. And then they talk <laughs> about the Bible together by themselves, just the two of them in the middle of the night. Yep. And, and, and Reverend comes up and with this really terrible pickup line where he's like, do you come here to pray often? Stupid, stupid. I'm so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Dudley, I actually enjoyed this part for a second. Dudley's like, Hey, pastor, it seems like, I don't know. It seems like the Bible's an obvious lie, a bunch. <laughs> <laughs> Can you reconcile that for me? And the pastor's like, no. so you, you believe you're a sinner, right? Yeah. You believe Jesus died for our sins? And Dudley's like, yeah, but but I don't, I don't know. Not for me, though. I kind of suck. Every I don't see how he would die for me, personally. Dudley's of the belief that if Jesus had looked down from the cross and seen him, he'd have been like, never mind, time out, time out. Dad, actually send the angels. <laughs> Jesus from the cross looks down and is like, and fuck you in particular, fatty. And then he just dies right Wait, afterwards. Yeah. Do you, are there cloth people, like really small, <laughs> oversized legged cloth people that I'm eventually, they're going to show up? I'm dying for them to, uh, cancel. <laughs> <laughs> so weird. Yeah, so they come out of that flashback. Then we cut over to the radio station again. And the big boss guy is, he, he's, <laughs> he's doing some more like racial tension stuff. He's mad about hiring these puppets. Okay, there's so much that's going on. First of all, he's on a racist screed about puppets, right? He's like, fucking felties. <laughs> but while he's doing it, he's Jesus playing God. with what? Okay. a desk toy? What is he playing with? It's like a metal pipe at that Again, moves around a little bit. We are in a Lovecraftian yeah, housecape. Exactly. It is liquid metal yeah. that he pulls apart with his rage and then bunches back together into unfluctuating shapes. It's a shape that's like non-Euclidean geometry and it makes you go mad when you stare into it and that's what he's doing. <laughs> right. One of and, those. and he's yeah. running his tongue along it while he says how bad <laughs> puppets are. This is, again, we're not exaggerating. He's literally playing with this terrifying toy very angrily and he's like, I hate the stupid puppet cloth people and their tiny little puppet footprints <laughs> all over my shit. And then he, he says, hey, um, puppet secretary, will you read that last slur back to me? And he's like, oh, sorry, that's your puppet too. 
that all happens. Uh, yeah, I, I don't mean you. Several of my, my my best friends are puppets. I mean, like, don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> Yeah, and there, by the way, there's very clearly a sex thing going on between Gladys oh, that's the secretary, and him. But like he has a moment where he literally pats the top of her head. He's like, "You know, I don't mean you, Gladys. You've always been my favorite." And I was just like, <laughs> "Jesus God, no. how do we make this movie stop?" Uh, so then he calls up the radio crew. They have a car phone. Yeah, by the way, it's a landline. It's a payphone. Yeah, <laughs> car phone landline all at the car? same time. That they just pull up from under the dash or whatever. Yeah. And he's like, listen up, you Sesame Street reject. You got to find Dudley in one hour or you're fucking fired. <laughs> it's actually what he says. Yeah. Sesame Street reject. So again, now we know that the Muppets exist. We know that Sesame Street exists in this universe. <laughs> yep. And he goes 100% Joe Pesci on him. He's like, you only exist out here because of me, you fucking puppets. <laughs> only me. I'm the one who's five feet. You puppets! I house you puppets. It's crazy, oh. man. If there had been a scene where they killed this boss with a bunch of bats in the desert, <laughs> they throw right? him in a hole in the desert, and there's just like weird puppets with big legs all standing around him, it'd be amazing. Gladys is like, he's still breathing. He's still breathing. <laughs> Whack with a shovel. Yeah. So <laughs> the radio crew now they have one hour. So. They go to a park to read the Bible to find clues about where they can kidnap this child. Is that what? Yeah. Is that what they're doing? Oh, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. you're right. And the radio crew notices a puppet girl next to them who is crying. And they walk right over to her and they're like, hey, I'm a stranger. Why are you crying? Turns out she has some information about Dudley, though. <laughs> it's bananas, but it's going to get crazier right now. Okay. So this oh, little girl okay. is like, yeah, uh, I know Dudley. I feel bad. I actually kind of used to bully him. Let me tell you a story about that. And we cut to a new flashback. They're in the bathroom, assuming uh, the bathroom at school, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And this girl's telling the story and she's like, yeah, so we cornered Dudley in the bathroom. Mm -hmm. At which point what we watch is not, you know, some puppets bothering another puppet in a bathroom. We watch a 45-year-old human porn star in short shorts, <laughs> in short shorts, with a weird baseball hat, a little bit askew. Yeah. And he's the, the leader of this bullying gang. Yeah. And he starts fat shaming Dudley some more. Yeah. And then, and then he said, like, keep in mind the hellscape we've been in. Then this full grown human, the only human to interact with the puppet that we've seen so far in a flashback goes, put him against the wall. <laughs> I can, I genuinely have not been as afraid as I was <laughs> since I heard the, in a long time, right? The mortal terror instilled in me when this full-grown adult, right? Because the immediate thought was, why did they need a human to play this part? Yeah, why is it? What, what was a human <laughs> capable of it? that a What's puppet was not? What's the benefit? Yeah. And I think, does he say you have a pretty mouth there or does he save it later? I don't remember exactly. <laughs> yeah, feel the vibe is it's bad. right there. It's right the vibe there. Is it is absolutely beyond. that vibe. He's in short shorts and he's got a mid-riff sweatshirt on. Like a mid-riff yep. revealing sweatshirt. <laughs> weird, man. It's real weird. <laughs> it's like he's wearing the clothes of the last child yes. he killed. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. If you turn him around, there's a puppet mouth on his back. He's wearing yeah. the other puppet as clothes. <laughs> <laughs> so he says, put him against the wall, which is terrifying already. Then he says, yeah, take his glasses. And I was like, all right, it's getting worse. But the puppets or, the, you know, the humans moving the puppets can't act fast enough. <laughs> so we watched them like amble over and slowly get there. And he's like, hurry up, take the glasses off. They finally take the glasses off. And then this human terrifying porn star <laughs> throws <laughs> wads of toilet paper near Dudley's face while he's up against yeah. the wall. Near Dudley. Yeah. He never hits him once. <laughs> it's real no. bad aim. He should have taken his glasses. Like they should have taken him off Dudley and put him on this guy. Maybe it hit him once. I don't know. Yeah. So that happens. And then the main bully guy, the porn star is like, all right, let's get out of here. We did it. Nailed it. Threw TP <laughs> near his face. Job well done, guys. High five. Yeah. Gave Eli a panic attack with our setup. I think we're good here. <laughs> and then it appears 
that he walks back into a stall and is like, yeah. all right, gang, let's go back to yeah. the stall together where we were. Well, I'm going to take the second half of this shit. Yeah, I need, exactly. And I need you all around me, so get over <laughs> here, kids. All right, everybody get back in here and lock eyes while right. I shit the rest yeah. of my shit. <laughs> Flash back over. Joey, cheer me on. Cheer me on, Joey. Hold my hand and blow on my thumb or else you're next to the wall. <laughs> and the puppets, again, this is a children's movie, and I swear, Cecil, Keith, you say if I'm lying, Dudley turns to one of the puppets who doesn't go in the stall, and he's like, oh, why'd you do that to me? And he goes, I'm sorry, Dudley, I had to do that to me or I'd be next. End yeah. of fucking scene. Yes, that's exactly it. Yeah. End of scene? That's it? Yeah. Yeah. What the fuck is happening? It's, <laughs> I was losing my mind. Literally, what the fuck is happening is in my notes about 19 times. Insane. Yeah. So that ridiculous flashback is over. And then we get Elvira. They're back in the park in the present. DJ Elvira is like, if I hear another sad story like that, I'm going to die. And then producer guy, his name's Barney, by the way. He's like, tell another sad story because she sucks. I want that woman to die. <laughs> I wish you would die. <laughs> And then for the rest of the movie, Elvira is going to be chasing Barney, trying to murder him with like calliope music playing in the background. Yeah. Now, question, Heath, when you say chasing him, trying to murder him, will it be in like a fun, wacky Muppet shenanigans way? Uh, more like, I'm going to fucking murder you. <laughs> <laughs> for real, this is not Muppet shenanigans. Murder. It's like the third act of a horror movie is going on in the background of, I cannot stress this enough, the rest of the film. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she never stops. She's like, she's like a one of these, like, like it's it's genuinely like a horror movie where like Hastor the Unspeakable like controls her mind and makes her chase after him like a zombie for the rest of the movie to like yeah. suck his brain out through his ear. Just silently staring. Yeah. It follows, owes some plagiarism money to this movie. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Myers kind of walks a little too fast past her and he's like, oh, we're doing you're doing slow. Okay, let's do slow. No, let's do slow. <laughs> That's creepier. Yeah. So from there, that little girl at the park was crying. She tells another story about Dudley. We get another flashback. We see Dudley writing Amy. That's her name. Writing her a love letter in class yeah. at school. Hey, hey, guys, we're here writing our fun puppet movie for kids. Let's see. We've had him tortured by a full grown adult in a bathroom. We've had him self-shaming. His parents hate him. His grandpa says his only hope is Jesus. Have we sexually humiliated yeah. the puppet that is the center <laughs> of our movie that's exactly yet? exactly what happened. No, to... let's fix that with the oh, next scene. It's so heartbreaking. <laughs> <laughs> it's genuinely a sad scene of a movie because he writes this, this really sweet little note. He's like, oh, every time I see you, like my heart beats faster. And this is puppy love, like genuine, just pure, beautiful. I'm a child. I see another child. I'm getting these like weird, like hormonal things happening in me. And then they're just like, ha ha, ha ha, ha ha. And then this kid just wants to commit suicide after. Yes. That's Amy, essentially what happens. The, the girl he writes the note to, right? He passes a note. And I was like, oh, the teacher's going to find it and read it. It's so much worse than that. Amy gets the note. She reads it and she goes, teacher, he wrote me a note. And I'm just like, oh God. Oh, Dudley. It's the worst. I feel so bad. I, my empathy is off the charts for, the for Dudley at this point. Oh. He's just self-immolating in his chair. It's like watching Alex Jones find out the other side has his entire phone. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Little, little girl in your class when you were a kid, did you profess like with a note or anything when you guys were kids? Absolutely not. I was terrified. No. You, what, are you, you crazy? Eli, did you do it? No, I told too many people I loved them to think about I, it. I did it, and the kids <laughs> threw the note away. <laughs> oh. 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 Just stares at you so and sad. eats it. Okay. It was so sad. It was a, it was a heart-crushing moment, but hey, here's the thing. At least she didn't turn to the whole class and be like, this fucking something Italian jackass wrote me a note. <laughs> something Italian. Something uh, Italian. Something Italian. <laughs> That's exactly it. See, so did she have an accident in high school, like a horrific accident? <laughs> I don't know what happened to her brakes on her car. Uh, she was terribly burned. <laughs> Okay, well, that terrifying moment's over. We get just a really quick shot of Elvira still trying to literally murder her coworker. Yeah. A little bit more. And then we get another story about Dudley. This time it's about the time he did a Bible reading 
for apparently like thousands of kids <laughs> at this little <laughs> park are crowded around to listen to him do Bible readings and sermons. And he's telling him about the story of Zacchaeus, which is some guy in the Bible who was like, hey, Jesus, let me stay at your house. And then everybody in town was like, that guy Zacchaeus sucks. Why does Jesus want to have a sleepover with Zacchaeus? And then Zacchaeus is like, this is great. Jesus let me hang out. I'm going to donate half my money to the poor. And that's the whole story. I'm pretty sure that's the whole story. <laughs> okay. But they've put a weird twist on it, which I, I I was like, is this in the Bible? And I could not find it. I'm sure I'm wrong. And it's in like the Catholic version, or maybe I missed something. But there's an emphasis in the story on the fact that Zacchaeus was short. Yeah. They go out of their way to say that multiple times. Right. And, and as though that, because the way I know the story of Zacchaeus is that he's walking and everyone's like, why are you hanging out with a money lender? And Zacchaeus is like, oh, I, I should give half my money to the poor because I'm in the presence of Jesus. Instead, the spin that Dudley has put it on is like, why are you hanging out with a short guy? <laughs> <laughs> no one swipes left on him on Tinder. Look at his ridiculous <laughs> legs. They're uh, nuts. <laughs> That fucking crazy leg guy should have to give half his money. And he does. Yeah. Yeah. Zacchaeus was the head of the IRS. He was like the chief tax collector. Right. He's a in money Jericho. collector. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. It's the part. Of, I know because it's the part of the Bible. No Christians listen to where Zacchaeus is like, I guess I should give away all the money except what I need to survive. Huh, Jesus? And he's like, yeah, let me tell you very specifically right now to give all the money you have to the poor. And the Christians are like, <laughs> <laughs> also, everybody should pay taxes regardless of what status they have church-wise. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Once you do that, I'm going to talk about <laughs> seizing the means of production, too. Right. Yeah. So come back. <laughs> Sorry, what were you saying about gay people? Trans people? <laughs> I heard something about trans people in women's sports. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so then we watch the Muppets fight some more. Yeah, we cut back out of that flashback. And Elvira and Barney, the two people who were like fighting to the death, she was trying to murder him a moment ago. Now they're like just almost fucking each other and reading the Bible because it's such a good book and they can't help it. I really honestly, based on the horrors this movie had inflicted on us so far, I thought they would be fucking. I would entirely, <laughs> it was I would have just written though, in right? my notes. I wouldn't even ask. I would have been like, yep. And now the Muppets are performing analingus on each other. I feel like, yeah, <laughs> I feel like the tongue was on the door or like the yeah. tip or something. Yeah, that's what it felt like. So from there, we cut to the radio station again, where Wally Walker is on the air now. I guess he's one of their other puppet radio personalities. And he's announcing that we're trying to find Dudley Dumpling. We really need to find him. Right then, Dudley calls into the radio station. Dudley's on the phone. Yeah, it's like when the, when a terrorist or a murderer is on the loose and he calls into the station to like arrange how he's going to meet the like cops. That. Yeah, it is like that. It's like a <laughs> cutscene for that. In, including, by the way, the station, the radio station, tracing the call? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the radio station. So the, the boss of the radio station is like, trace the call, Cynthia, or whatever. They have that device ready in case they have, I don't know, ransom situations. They've had them sure. in the past. Yeah. Well, Did they, they are trace kidnappers. Him? Did they trace him to like some kind of weird safe house somewhere where they had no idea where he was? Was he like staying with a friend of a friend of a friend? Did he move to a different town? No, he's at home. No. And no, he's yeah. at the fucking address and they, they know of. They got the kidnapping ransom thing backwards. Like it's not you who needs the phone tracer. <laughs> You're the kidnapper. It's fine. That's exactly it too. <laughs> but they get, they get the address of Dudley just in time before the phone call ends. They traced it. He's at grandpa's house. So meanwhile, the radio team is driving back from the park and talking about this amazing Bible book they just discovered. They're all brand new to the Bible. They've never heard of this. But then they get a call from the boss and he's like, yeah, so remember we were going to go kidnap that child? Go kidnap that yeah. child. That's back on the menu, guys. Here's we're the address. It's the grandparents' house. Yeah, no, we're doing it. Yeah. Or you're fired. Or I'll just, yeah. in fact, I'll just kill you myself. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we cut over to Dudley at grandpa's house and he's role-playing prophetization with the dog. Yeah. I also like that this dog, it does noises every so often, but it's clearly an atheist dog and he fucking hates Dudley and he hates doing <laughs> yeah. Bible skits, which I enjoyed. Really wanted the dog to hit him super hard with counter-apologetics, right? And he was like, rah, 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 rah. Kalam cosmological is a category error. Rah, 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 rah. <laughs> all, and all the, all you know, it starts to come out because we really haven't heard about this church's ideas that much so far. A little bit here and there, but not much. It's all the sort of fluff of the Bible. 
But from here on out, this is where the horror theme starts to take place because they keep on talking about, yeah, and then Jesus fucking died. He died a lot for you, died. And they keep saying it over and over, and it just adds to the terror of the movie. Mm -hmm. Constantly. <laughs> This is like death cult. This is one of those death, you know, like, of course it's in Indiana. You need to be in a death cult in Indiana to survive, but it's one of the Indiana death cults. For sure. <laughs> Absolutely. For sure. <laughs> so, so Gramps comes into the room and he tells Dudley that you should share your faith on the radio. And then they pray and they do the blocking their eyes while, while praying thing again, which was weird. Oh yeah. Super terrifying. And while that's happening, Dudley disappears out of nowhere. Yeah. Like Gramps looks over, Puts his hands back out of the way and he sees that Smoke bomb. Dudley's just gone somehow. Yeah, he Poof. Batmans. Yeah. What what actually happens in the movie? What is, what is the movie saying happened there? I think Dudley sneaks off because he's nervous to share his faith on the radio. And he just fucking like dive rolls through the window glass. Yeah, and he like, just like runs out. out. Yeah. 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 Repels down from the second floor, I think, with his giant legs. I think that's what happens. <laughs> Actually, he just steps out the window because he has the weird, long, crazy, love crafty exactly, legs. Yeah, he and does they just mean. fold up inside his body. So he just leans one giant, terrifying leg out the window and then just stepped out. Exactly. His legs snap in like a gruesome, like horrible crunching, but then he just pulls them in from his body and new wet legs grow out. It's a slapping wet sound. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. Once again, I am whole. <laughs> Praise Cthulhu. <laughs> okay, so Dudley's gone. Right then, Elvira, Barney, and Charlie, the radio team, they arrive at the house and they tell Gramps, we demand to see Dudley. We know he's here. We we phone traced him from our radio station. Based on what this movie had given us so far, if they had strapped Grandpa down and pulled the fingernails from his hands <laughs> for information on Dudley's whereabouts, it would be the third most horrifying thing the movie had shown us so far. Oh, I just want to say too, like there's like a weird sexual thing between the woman and grandpa again. Yes, there was. Did you guys catch like, the, like she's like, she like grabs his head and like, like plants like a long, weird sound effect laden kiss on him. She does kiss him again. It, that is it's true. aggressive yeah. once yeah. again. Weird and sure aggressive is. again. Yeah. Right. So grandpa is like, yeah, I don't know. He, he literally just vanished moments ago. That's so weird. I, I don't know what to tell you. And then, correct me if I'm wrong, I didn't understand this moment either. The radio team is like, yeah, okay, fine. We're going to interview the dog on the radio. <laughs> That's exactly yes! what happened. And everybody's like, yeah, that makes sense. Yes! Let's let's set that up. And then they do that. Yes. That was the idea. That was their million idea. They're like, you know what? Our jobs are on the line. We got to do something. Get the dog on here. He was talking to Jesus about the dog. So the dog probably knows the secret to happiness. <laughs> What? What? But the okay, but they they show us this. The dog gets on the radio, like the DJ is like, "All right, yeah. we have Philemon, the dog of Dudley," and and then we just hear woo, 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 the woo, dog woo. makes dog sounds for a few minutes, and everybody's like, "Man, I don't think this is working on the radio. <laughs> it like we thought it would. <laughs> this is going badly." And then they cut. Yeah, and that's it. That's the end of the scene. They cut, they cut. We watch people gnashing and tearing their clothes in the street like, I was promised the words of the gods. <laughs> I assume they fucking set Philemon on fire in a public square somewhere. <laughs> Shoot the dog in the head like it's the uh. last act of the mist. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, a dog puppet maybe just got shot in the head along with some yes. people at the same time if they put their heads together. A dog puppet failed to prophetize. So let's give act three sure. the heart cell. Yeah, time for the heart cell on the rest of the movie that had that just happen. Will the racial tension between humans and puppets really <laughs> ramp up? Yes, it will. Will we learn a new slur word in this puppet movie for kids? Is Heath having a stroke? No, he's not. <laughs> that stuff is really going to happen when we return for the God riveting damn. conclusion of In Search of Dudley Dumpling. Hey, haven't you heard? Dudley is reading Bible stories to the local children. What a lovely young man. Why, there he is now. And then, in Ezekiel's vision, he beheld the two lovers of God, but they were unfaithful whores, and they're just getting railed by cocks the size of donkeys. Oh, he's, um, he's um, doing Bible stories. 
Yeah, like like all of them, I guess. Oh, wow. And I looked it up. When the Bible says their issue was like horses, that's a quarter cup, you guys. Uh, that's 12 times more than a human. So okay, hey, Dudley, it. Dudley, uh, why, don't, why don't we get back to, um, you know, like the Sermon on the Mount, something like that? But nobody's eaten the bread I baked yet. Kids do not eat that bread. You guys want to see God or not? Hi, I'm Heath Enright. And I'm Cecil something Italian. And I'm Eli Bosnick. You know, Cecil here has certainly had his share of cell phone troubles. You have, Cecil? He sure has. Missed text messages, missed phone calls, even dropped service. Oh. Yep. Yep. That, that's 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 right. It's a, oh. it's a real, real definite, true that, problem. That's weird. You never have any of those problems when, I, when I'm calling. No, 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 no. Eli, go ahead. Well, Cecil, the good news is now there's Mint Mobile. What's Mint Mobile? Mint Mobile offers premium wireless service starting at just $15 a month. Mint Mobile's secret sauce is that they're the first company to sell wireless service online only. They cut out the cost of retail stores and pass those sweet, sweet savings directly to you. That sounds good, Eli, but I don't think it's going to solve my signal problems. Au contraire, my favorite au pair. What now? All plans come with unlimited talk and text, plus high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. Use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and keep your same phone number along with all your existing contacts. I switched to Mint Mobile when they became a sponsor, and I get the best service I've ever had for a fraction of the price. Oh, um, that sounds, sounds good. It is good. To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash gam. That's mintmobile.com slash gam. Cut your wireless bill to $15 a month at mintmobile.com slash gam. So what do you say, Cecil? Ready to fix that phone of yours? Well, I'm, I, I ignore your calls because I dislike you as a person. Ah, classic roasting. And we're back. When we left off, I don't know, something with puppets. And now <laughs> Elvira and the entire crew, they drive back to the park to look for Dudley some more. Oh, no, no, no. I'm so sorry to interrupt you, Heath, with this little correction. They've been searching for Dudley for two days. Well, yeah. <laughs> we, we got to the park for a second. We see Dudley crushing it with his sermons in the park some more. And then we see the crew being like, we've been looking for him for two entire days and can't <laughs> That's find right. him. That's right. Here's my question, though. They got fired yeah. in the last scene because, you know, they put a dog on the radio and that didn't work out like they thought it would. Mm hmm. Yep. So they're fired. Why? Why are they doing this? Why are they still working for the radio station to find Dudley and get him on the air? We can only assume vengeance. <laughs> <laughs> they're doing it because their boss, right after they quit, put up a, a sign that said, no one wants to work anymore. And they're doing it just <laughs> to show him. They're just trying to show him. Okay. I actually wrote down in my notes here, aren't they fucking fired? Yeah, me too. And then one of the characters is like, wait, aren't we fucking fired? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let's let's just stop doing this. And I don't know. I like that book from before the Bible. Let's find Jesus. But first, let's get some lunch. I'm hungry. Yes. So they go get burgers. But Mothra attacks a kid for a second and then what? they cut. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. What was that? I'm going to describe this scene. I have to. I have to describe this scene because no one will fucking believe us. We're watching a human <laughs> child. We watch a human child and then a puppet on a string with no one puppeting it slowly lowers down onto that screaming child's face. <laughs> the puppet is a moth the size of the, the kid. Yeah, the kid. Yeah. And it lowers and the kid is like, ah! And we just watch it slowly <laughs> lower down onto his face. Cut, never addressed in the movie again. No idea. No idea. We got a fishing pole and a puppet and we're going to use it, damn it. We still have that and crop duster. Screaming child, right? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Let's have him lower a moth puppet. I don't know. They did it. So then uh, I guess they ate lunch. We don't get to see them eat lunch. I kind of wanted to see them eat burgers yeah. at the burger bun or whatever it was called. Big bun burger. Big bun burger. It's, it sounded yeah. good. I actually got hungry. <laughs> When I was watching that. Where we, we put tiny little burgers on lots of bread. It's big bun burger. <laughs> Extra bread like Liz Lemon. I love it. <laughs> so they eat lunch. We don't see it. And then they go to Dudley's church. They park and they take a nap in their van in the parking lot of the church. <laughs> they're staking out the church for Dudley. Oh, they're staking it out yeah, and that's they fell right. asleep? That's yes. Right. Yeah. Okay, that actually makes a little bit of sense, I guess. And uh, then they wake up 
And they find out that Dudley got baptized at church today. So they wake up, they go inside, they talk to the pastor, and he he explains he did a baptism. This is a new pastor, by the way, right? Yeah, it's a different guy. This, this is a, yeah, totally so different guy. guy right? was yeah. Like, yeah, the other guy was like Children of the Corn. This guy is not Children of the Corn. He's a different dude. Yeah. And he's got a fucking amazing outfit on. He looks like the fucking Joker from like Batman in the 60s. He's got like a purple plaid outfit on that is absolutely fucking lit. It yeah. looks amazing. <laughs> okay, so that new pastor with the much better outfit tells us another story about Dudley. Turns out Dudley was kind of a, a bad kid at Sunday school for a while. Yes, the twist that this movie is now delivering us is oh, you've been worrying too much about Dudley. It turns out he kind of had it coming. He deserves it. <laughs> <laughs> is he right. such a shit? So we see Dudley at Sunday school class and the first shot of him is a little crazy. He's got Coke mouth, like he the does. puppet has Coke yes. mouth. And the, yes. the puppeteer is, there's no other way to describe what he's doing. He's chosen to do, this kid took too much Adderall and he's just going yep. nuts with it. <laughs> he's just trying to pull out his own teeth. Yeah, his mouth is wide open and he's convulsing. Yeah, yeah, and he's right? going to open a restaurant that's yeah. not going to work. Yeah, <laughs> and then he, he folds up a paper airplane and he throws it at the pastor. So he's like a cut up in Sunday school here. He class clown. Mm -hmm. And the pastor's like, Dudley, is that you? And Dudley's like, Yeah, it was me. And he pulls him up to the front, and I was like, Oh God, he's like, You're you're the one I'm fucking this week, Dudley. Oh Jesus Christ! <laughs> uh, it's okay. He's already got a felt hole. <laughs> huh? Doors open, right? Little light humor. There we go. No, okay. But he turns to Dudley. And again, the fucking horror of this movie. He goes, we don't care about grades here, Dudley. We just care about how much you love Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So then we cut to, I guess, later that day in the same flashback. And they're mm -hmm. all at the church service after Sunday school. And they're singing Amazing Grace together, which kind of bothered me because I like that song. Yeah. Actually, actually that's... If you go anywhere in Indiana, Amazing Grace is playing and puppets are singing it. That's just yep. how Indiana is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Cecil really doesn't like Indiana. <laughs> <laughs> then we get this weird, like, explanation for the reasons of the movie that we don't need, right? The pastor is explaining to the puppets that I'm the one who told his grandfather to tell him to be Christian. but like, And so we see the grandfather telling him to be, but it doesn't matter. Like we didn't need that. We weren't like, where did grandpa get this Jesus fella's ideas? It is no point in the movie. Right. And then this second pastor talking with Gramps is like, hey, here's what I need you to do. I need you to tell Dudley the good news of the gospel and maybe he'll be a better kid. And <laughs> Gramps, to his credit, is like, isn't that like your job as yeah. the pastor to tell him the <laughs> no, your whole story of the gospels? Fucking thing. Yeah, like, can I give you like 10% of my money to do that every week? What would you week? say you do here? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, yeah, no, no, I, I'm doing it, but you, you, you too. You can <laughs> as yeah. well. Yeah. Tag, you're it. The oh, best part of this scene, though, is... Grandpa's puppet is clearly having a wardrobe malfunction and his head is coming off in yep, the scene. His head is so separating his neck from his body. Is like, you could see like the person's knuckles in the neck of the thing. So it looks like there's like a, like a beating crazy <laughs> yep. form inside of his neck <laughs> that is sort of pulsating out. And it's terrifying. It's absolutely terrifying. Yes. In the fitting stripe of horror of this movie throughout this conversation, grandpa's neck is bubbling over. <laughs> <laughs> it's like pulsating. It was like, a, I think I saw a cockroach crawl out of it at one point. It was terrifying. Dave Cronenberg is walking out of the screening of Dudley fucking Dumpling being like, all right, there's some shit you just don't do. Okay, guys? Jesus. Cinema's an art form. It needs respect. I'm going to go throw uh, up in the bathroom. Okay, so from there, we get the story of the actual baptism of Dudley. And this is the scariest moment in the goddamn movie. It's okay. terrifying throughout, but this is the worst. Yikes. Fucking yikes. This is so fucking terrifying. So this pastor is like, all right, kids, we're going to do the baptisms. Everybody got their robes on, and they do. And one kid is like, why do we have to wear these weird robes that have a front zip? And the pastor is like, that's because, I don't know, sometimes we like you to take your clothes off and put on robes with a front zip. As he's saying this, <laughs> he's doing, you know when like in the movie, it's like a, a romantic moment when like one person's putting on a dress and she's like, 
Oh, can you zip me up? It's like that, but on the front, and nobody asked, the kid wasn't like, please do this. The pastor's just like sexually front zipping yeah. slowly. The road. 20 times slower. 20 so times slower. Fucking slow, making hard <laughs> eye contact. They're both yes. humans, by the way. Yep. Yeah, no, hard no eye contact no as he slowly traces his fingers in this zipper up the body of a child who's like, <laughs> I'm uncomfortable in what I'm wearing. And he's like, Well, you don't want to get your clothes all wet, <laughs> do you? That's a lie. All though. wet and squishy. And fucking Dudley is like, Hey, you can do mine. And he's like, Shut the fuck up, Dudley. <laughs> <laughs> and then. Then we watch the kid, we watch that. Then we watch the kids getting baptized. And for no reason, for no reason I could possibly think of that accounts to God or man, there is a four, four second long shot of yeah. the pastor just licking his lips and watching these children dunk themselves in water. And he's and, he, and he's waterboarding them, right? Like, yeah. let's not forget. Thank you. He's got a fucking cloth over their mouth, dunks them, and then picks them up. Cloth still firmly pressed up against their nose and mouth, like they're fucking, like they're in Guantanamo Bay. Does this smell like ether? Dunk yeah. you. Back up. <laughs> <laughs> Terrifying. It is the scariest part of the movie. Scariest part of the movie. I thought the kid was going to jump up and start screaming where the bomb was when they took the, the mask off, when they took the cloth away from his face. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, God, we finished watching that, finally. And then we cut back to the radio people talking to that second pastor in, the, in their pastor's office. And they're like, yeah, so where is Dudley? And he's like, oh, you're trying to hunt down a child. Yeah, no, no, no problem. He'll be back here tonight. Come on by. So that's the new plan. Yep. That night, we see them staking out the church again to do the kidnapping. And so they, they go to church because they're looking for Dudley, right? They go in and this usher comes up to them. And he's like, hello, please stay after the service and come to the basement. We have something to show you there. <laughs> and I was like, oh, my God, if there's a blood sacrifice, I'm going to be so relieved. <laughs> It all fits now. It's so funny too, because every single person, like real person in this shot is clearly a member of the church and they look like they're in a hostage video. They are looking straight. <laughs> Nobody is looking at the puppet in the back seat. Everybody's like, don't look at the puppet. Don't look at the puppet. Don't look at the puppet. It will eat your soul. Don't look at the puppet. Don't look at the puppet. And then everybody's just staring straight ahead the whole time. It's terrifying. I don't know if y'all have seen the director's cut of The Hills Have Eyes in the scene oh, where yeah. they go into the church and everyone turns and you realize they're all deformed like the rest of the people in Hills Have Eyes. They stole that shot from this <laughs> movie. <laughs> <laughs> to the extent, not, they steal it so closely that at one point the puppet goes, I like snacks and everyone in the room turns and laughs at him in slow motion. <laughs> He's like, I like snacks. It's supposed to be a joke. So they're all like, ah, 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 come to the basement later. <laughs> I'm watching this perched on a chair at this point. I'm no longer sitting in the chair. I'm standing feet on the chair, <laughs> staring at the screen. If the girl from the ring had crawled through at that point, it would have been a relief. <laughs> You'd have been like, oh, thank God it's a comedy. Yeah. <laughs> Anything, <laughs> anything. We also get a shot of Charlie. He's one of the two producer guys who's staking out the inside of the church here. He forgets that they're doing the kidnapping because church is so great and loving and delightful. Oh yeah, that's right. Because he's he's because he's gushing over a potluck. Potlucks, first off, potlucks fucking suck. They're the <laughs> worst way to eat food. <laughs> Fuck potlucks forever. Cecil forever. always brings something Fuck amazing potlucks. and everybody else is like, I brought Twinkies. Fuck <laughs> potlucks. So I fucking hate them. So I fucking cannot tell you how much I hate <laughs> potlucks. But imagine a church potluck on top of that. Like, fuck you. <laughs> oh my God. No, I can fucking give myself food poisoning at home. Thank you. So many funeral potatoes. Okay, this was this was set in Indiana and there was a potluck at a church. We really triggered Cecil with a bunch of stuff. <laughs> yeah, I feel bad. <laughs> All we needed was like some bad fencing, right? <laughs> People talking about how you should yeah. declaw your cat. And we Somebody officially... pours out a bottle of whiskey. It's the worst movie. Yeah, yeah. exactly. For me, it's just the puppets. I don't like yeah. puppets. <laughs> I don't like them. I know, like, I know I'm, I just accidentally played into the weird racial tension of the movie that they put together. I don't like, so you know how, like, I don't know, if you're an adult and you're playing like, 
basketball with a bunch of little kids. You like, you know, kind of let them win and do your best. I do the opposite in that scenario for a second. I have to catch myself. With puppets, I feel the same way. When I see them, I just want to like swat basketballs back in their <laughs> face and like push them okay. too he's, hard. And stuff. He's he's an aggression like a volleyball thing. so hard on them. Right just in their can't face. can't stop it. Yeah. You, you feel like an, a need to hurt the puppets. Yeah, I do. I don't do it. But I feel that. Yes, yes okay, I do. Cool. So the horror has creeped from the movie and <laughs> on to our podcast. <laughs> We're going to hear a slow clicking as Heath unpinches his jaw and is like, I long for puppet blood. <laughs> I'm literally, we should not release an episode this week and we should release this on Halloween. This should be our <laughs> Halloween fucking episode. <laughs> Someone's first episode was this. Someone was like, oh, yo, you got to listen to God awful movies. Those chants are so funny. They make fun of the Christian movies. And then we're like, what if the tentacles were inside us all along? And they're like, Doreen, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about, girl. You need to listen to some other comedy. Are you okay? <laughs> They kept talking about other dimensions and the puppets <laughs> rising from the deep. And then one of them just sprung the show to a whole stop so he could say how he wants to hurt the puppets, even though they're literal cloth. <laughs> and this other one did an extended bit about that and brought the <laughs> show to a further halt doing a voice about you, the Doreen. thing that was like three we levels deep. It was insane. Hold your phone in front of your hand. I'll climb out of it right now, <laughs> podcast listener. I'm going to pull my body horrifically through the screen and pull you into the podcast verse with me. There's a puppet of Eli right behind you. You've always been dreaming. Don't look. In Don't a look. moth costume, <laughs> lowering yeah. slowly. <laughs> I always... With his giant legs dangling. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So... They finish up that church recon. They don't find Dudley. We're going to talk about the rest of this movie. We're going to get through it. We cut over to the hospital. The pastor was visiting dying people, but Dudley and his family also visit the hospital because they're kind of good Christians. And his parents are talking to uh, a woman who may be dying in the hospital, I guess. Yeah, she's really sick. She has a cast on her arm, guys. Very yeah. sick. Very, very sick. Oh, she's dying of the elbow some, something. Yeah, elbow. elbow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, elbow yeah. something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. And that's when Elvira, Charlie, and Barney show up at the hospital too. Yeah. And this is this is when the racial tension really ramps up, like I was talking <laughs> oh about. Oh God. Before. Oh God. <laughs> We're talking about the nurses, aren't we? Yes. We're about to talk about the this fucking is, nurses. This is when the nurses this storm front really nurses. Yeah. get into some hate speech. And I'm not exaggerating. Terrifying. They got their own channel on bit shoot, 100 <laughs> percent no question. These nurses are on Rumble. They have not read a newspaper <laughs> in years. So, so yeah, the radio team walks in, the puppets, they walk in, they go up to the desk and ask one of the nurses, hey, um, we're looking for the this guy Dudley. Uh, maybe, maybe you know where he is. And one nurse says like, yeah, so I saw some pup, some little people in room. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Hundred percent. Okay. Does, and you realize you realize what happens then. Puppets is a slur. Puppets, Puppets is, is a, a slur, slur word in this universe. Yes. Which means the entire movie they've just been like, "All right, you kikes, <laughs> listen up. <laughs> you want your job it's so back." True. It's so true because this is where someone finally stops themselves in the workplace. <laughs> uh, okay, and I think the movie. If it was picking, leave a, it to a fucking puppo. I think, it, <laughs> I think if the movie was picking a side, they're anti-puppet. They do stop here and try to like point out that there's a slur word in play, mm -hmm. but they land on anti-puppet, right? Definitely. Oh yeah, they were only being nice for a second while the puppets were there because as soon as they leave, they just <laughs> hammer the puppets. Right. Yeah. They tell some more racist jokes. Yeah. They just turn to each other after they leave, and they're like. Hey, how do, how do we give surgery to a puppet? How? How? You, all you need is a sewing machine. Is there cloth? <laughs> Fucking stupid puppet. Felties. I bet yeah. they don't feel pain. She says, I don't, I bet they don't feel pain. <laughs> what about the puppets? <laughs> the puppets. This is the best. <laughs> oh man, it's so the best. And it's uh, genuinely like, they have like a... Like a venom to how they talk about puppets, which is it's really uncalled for. So upsetting. <laughs> this is the strangest fucking movie. So we're still in the hospital. Just enough time for us to hear on the radio and everybody in the hospital to hear on the radio that they still can't find Dudley Dumpling. 
So they can't tell everybody in town the secret of the infinite joy. So they're shutting down the radio station forever. Once and for all. <laughs> <laughs> and then we cut to Dudley. He has a secret hideout in the woods and he's there with Gramps. Yeah, Gramps somehow got all the way up into his like very, very precarious tree house without breaking a hip. He, he made yep. it all the way up there with his giant legs, probably. He probably just stepped right up there through the woods. Yes, and we see the giant legs hanging out of the fucking <laughs> tree house. Can I ask what's happening with the raccoon in this? Jesus can we Christ, all, Can we you. figure this out? Can we figure... Is, is it being pulled into another dimension by its yes. like internal organs? Is that yes. what's happening? There is a raccoon having a bad day. Yes. <laughs> so for for the people at home, I, first of all, you need to watch this. It's free on YouTube, and it's it's ha it's a hell that we can only like. We are only free if you watch it. We're going through the ring right now, so free us from this by watching this. <laughs> In this scene, here's what I think happened. I think they had a raccoon puppet, and they were like, "Oh, we'll have him making like cute little motions." But what the guy did is he made a fist. So if you picture a raccoon, just like fucking collapsing in on itself in the like <laughs> harshest form of seizure. Like rocking back and forth and with a yes. cold shower that they're sitting yes. on the ground. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Getting scrubbed with giant brushes like it just got contaminated in a nuclear fire or something. <laughs> right, and exactly. Like, That's what it looks like. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, so we get, what, what would you say, like eight minutes of the raccoon rocking back yeah, and forth? It's, it's so gotta be. So much footage of the raccoon just sitting there yeah. screaming. I'm still watching it. Yeah. <laughs> and then everybody, all the radio people finally find the hideout somehow. They show up and they're like, you got to go on the radio, Dudley. We need, we're the, sh the station's getting shut down. You got to tell everybody about Christian joy. Yeah. And they run off to the station, but the dog who has no arms has to use his face to get down the ladder, which is yes. terrifying. <laughs> <as well. laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. We watch the dog go down a ladder with his teeth. <laughs> Just face teeth cracking away. out and flying sideways yep. like chiclets. <laughs> oh, amazing. <laughs> I want to suffer like the Christ child. <laughs> so, so that scene's over. We cut straight to a phone I call. I don't believe it is. <laughs> well, yeah. I don't think it'll ever end. No, <laughs> forever. But now we're watching the big boss boss who happens to be a puppet. He's yelling at Floyd, the human boss who fired everybody earlier. And big puppet boss is like, why do I fucking hire humans? So I guess they're trying to bring it back. Maybe they're a little pro puppet here. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. Is there like a, another human that's the puppet's boss too that we don't know about? I mean, mm. where does it end? Where does it end, Keith? <laughs> we know that it's a cycle of violence, but yeah. where it begins and where it ends. This movie's a real thinker. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Affirmative action hire. That's why it's a puppet that, boss, boss. Honestly, it feels like this movie being like, all right, so we gave it, we kind of tipped our hand a little bit that we don't like puppos, so we'll make the boss <laughs> a puppet. Jesus yeah. Christ. I, I feel like maybe that's what was happening. Real fucking felt faces over here. <laughs> Should have killed all of you in Nam when I had the chance. <laughs> <laughs> fucking cancel culture. <laughs> We're watching that phone call happen, but then we find out that Dudley has been found. Here's the problem. That guy that he was just talking to, Murray, had just said, no, I'm shutting down the whole radio station. So now there's like a ticking clock. The radio station is going to get shut down, but they do have Dudley. Yeah. And to be clear, when he says I'm shutting down the radio station, he means he's literally going to the yeah. roof gonna, to turn off the power. He's going to he's gonna climb the tower like fucking the hunchback. Quasimodo. Of yeah. <laughs> Quasimodo. Yeah. He might as well have Gladys's dead body over his shoulder. <laughs> Sanctuary! Yeah. So Floyd is kind of torn here, but not really. He just got told you got to unplug the radio station. But everybody's like, hey, we found Dudley. Let's go on the radio. And he's like, no, I. it's like five seconds too late. I was told yeah, to go flip a literal giant lever that the radio station has that shuts down the entire business. So the rest of the radio team's like, we're going rogue. We're putting Dudley on the radio. And this scene is unnaturally tense. Like it is unnaturally tense where he's like, he's like climbing up the stairway and he's shedding clothes and he's vomiting and he's breathing heavy. <laughs> and then he's dragging himself step by step up these. And this music is getting more and more intense. And they keep cutting back to Dudley. And they're like, Dudley, you got to do it. He's like, I don't know if I can do it. I don't know if I can go alive. And they're like, do it, Dudley, do it. You can do it, Dudley. And he's like, I don't know. 
And then the music keeps getting louder and louder and louder. And then finally <laughs> we get to the end and he's getting ready to pull the lever to shut the hole. Cause that's how you shut radio station. Don't be stupid. That's how you shut a radio oh, station. Is, is it? I, I haven't been to many stations. Lever. It's a giant it's lever. It's main switch. It's, mm -hmm. his, it's right on there. It's his main switch. It goes to pull it <laughs> and there's a, a it's saved because there's a, they happen to have like a test speaker right next to it. So like, just in case you were going to unplug <laughs> the station at the wrong time. And he saves the day by speaking like three sentences about Jesus. Oh, it's like, it's like a missile silo where you have the two yeah. keys that you have to turn yes. at the same time. Yeah, yes. exactly. Yes. Just, exactly. just, yeah. movie is just like, yeah. like that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> also, um, just want to check if I'm insane and was having a, a second stroke. While Dudley's giving his big Bible speech on the radio, like fucking theist John Galt, do we see a girl on a unicycle? Girl with on a, a unicycle. Boom girl we sure on a unicycle. Do, girl on a unicycle. Yep. yep. Why? Mm. Oh, why is there two seconds of a girl on a unicycle that's never explained or visited again? Great question, Heath. It's because this movie is a nightmare that Cthulhu <laughs> had. <laughs> She just runs over a raccoon who's all sad, <laughs> kills him. <Yeah. laughs> An ocean of blood pours out of the raccoon and drowns everyone in the town in a rising lead liquid <laughs> that's also <laughs> boiling hot. Yeah, man, why the fuck not? Yeah. Based on what we've seen so far. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, Dudley gives his speech. Yep. The girl on the unicycle with the boombox does something. And that's the end of the movie. <laughs> We're done. Yep. I'm serious. We waited through all that for like three sentences of like, God's pretty cool, right, guys? Anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's the end. That The moral of the story is kidnapping a child is cool if it leads to a good speech about Jesus <laughs> on the <laughs> local public radio. The end. Also, unicycle nope. boombox girl. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Now the end. Yeah. That's it. Okay. Well, normally we like to close it out with a, like a deep question about the movie. And that's going to do it for Dudley Dumpling. But that's not going to do it for the episode just yet. Because we found another terrible movie for next week. So, Eli, what's on deck? Well, assuming the nightmares stop and I haven't removed my eyes with my bare hands, <laughs> we'll be watching something that um, we saved for a very special, uh, very special time. We'll be watching The Secret. Oh. Oh, from the book? With the, is that the vision yeah. board book? Yeah, it's where mm -hmm. you like, think about stuff and comes reality. The, the Jews didn't want it bad enough, the book. Oh, Jesus Christ. Great. Love it. All right. Well, with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 364 to a merciful close. Huge thanks to Cecil for joining us. Cecil, really appreciate it. Thanks for having me, guys. Appreciate it. And of course, a big thanks to our Patreon donors for all the generosity. If you'd like to help support the show, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful, and that'll get you early access to an ad-free version of every episode. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist, Citation Needed, Skeptocrat, and D&D Minus, available in all the podcast places. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for the podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slotnick of Evil Drafts on Mars. All other music was written and performed by our audio engineer Morgan Clark and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Cecil and Eli, I'm Heath, promising to work hard turn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you at the Animal House close. The Indiana church leaders would continue to slowly dress their children and get them wet. <laughs> the puppets defeated the humans in the race war and made them walk the trail of puppeteers. <laughs> genocide. <laughs> that has to be the end. I had one, but that has to be the end. <laughs> so good. That's the topper for the episode. which was recommended to us once on our email at God of Movies. <laughs> as, exactly. as I stated, I was the whole time I was brewed, You said I was like feuding. a million times. I and I was like, where? And you were like, like, oh, like a million like, at that, at that email address. address. And then you were like, where? And, then I and I was like, it. at the email. And it was Guys, one I'm exactly. still here. You found I'm still here. evidence. Cecil, oh, who do here. you agree with? Cecil, I, who do you agree with? The truth or Eli? Can, can we just do the skits? <laughs> the truth. Every time. I hate it when you put me between you two. You sound like Dudley Dudley. <laughs> I ignore your calls because I dislike you as a person. Ah, classic roasting.
<laughs> like as a per like as a person. I hate you ah, so much. I so too. much. I do. So so much. Arr, look at us. Stop lies about me. emails on the god awful movies thing. <laughs> You got his fucking head. You lying sack of shit. You asked me for a fucking email. I gave you an email. <laughs> the preceding podcast is a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm LLC. Copyright 2022. All rights reserved.